Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be talking about a few examples with differentiation rules. This will be a very short video just because most of the examples I'm going to do at first are very simple for the most part. And there will be one example where I talk about an example where I did from an old exam I took back in university. But otherwise, most of these examples are going to be fairly simple. The examples will get harder once we do later videos, but for now, they will be fairly simple. So let's get right to it. So the first example. Actually, before I do the examples, I'm going to quickly go over the rules that we did. So just for your reference, we talked about a few rules in the previous video. So we talked about the fact that the derivative of any constant is equal to zero. The next one was the derivative of any sum or difference for that matter is equal to the derivative of the sum or differences. So that's f of x plus or minus the derivative of g of x. The next one we talked about was the constant multiple rule. So this one was the derivative of c times f of x is equal to c times the derivative of f of x and then the next one we talked about was the power rule so the derivative of x to the power of n is equal to n x to the n minus 1 and n is any real number in the in the proof of the power rule we did in the last video we assumed that n was an integer but as i also mentioned n can be any number it doesn't have to be an integer okay so with that let's just very quickly do a few examples so the first so the first example suppose i want to calculate the derivative of x well this is fairly simple well the derivative of x well according to the power rule we bring remember that x just has an invisible one up there so the 1 comes down, we get 1x to the 1 minus 1. So that's going to be 1x to the power of 0. Well, anything to the power of 0 is 1, so we just get a 1. And we get the slope as 1. And intuitively, this should make sense. This, the graph of y equals x kind of looks like, so that's my axis. The graph of y equals x looks something like this. So this is y equals x. And any slope or any slope at this point or at, at any point on this curve is going to look like uh well it's just going to be a straight line so it's just going to look something like that so the slope is going to be one there it's going to be one here and so on so the slope is always going to be fixed and always equal to one and if that doesn't convince you this is the for this is the same in the foot as the form y equals mx plus b the b is zero in this case and m is one so the slope also has to be one so it's kind of the same idea here so intuitively that should make sense <coughs> excuse me so the next one we have the derivative so this time we have the derivative of one over x so you might be asking oh but this is the this is a quotient i'm supposed to take the derivative of something over something and we will learn how to do that in a future video but for now we can rewrite this a little bit differently so we could rewrite this as derivative of x to the minus 1. And then if we use the power rule, we get minus 1 x to the minus 1. So I bring the minus 1 down and then subtract 1 from minus 1. So minus 1 minus 1. So hopefully that makes sense. And then we get minus 1 x to the minus 2. So once again, I bring the minus 1 out in front and then I subtract 1 from the minus one and the exponent so that gives me minus two okay so not too bad so the next one we're going to be doing is the derivative of x to the power of pi you may be asking oh well pi is a decimal how am i supposed to take the derivative of that you can as i mentioned n can be any number so any yeah it can, it can be any number so as long as they go ahead and take the derivative we get pi times x to the pi minus 1. And if you want, you can approximately get a value. So that's going to be about 3.14 x to the power of 2.14. But this is this is not necessary. You can just leave your answer in this form, and that's absolutely correct. 
So that takes care of that example. So the next one, the derivative of uh, the fourth root of x cubed. So if you go ahead and rewrite this, we get the derivative of x to the 3 over 4. And then if you go ahead and use the power rule on this, well, that's going to give us 3 over 4 x to the minus 1 over 4, because 3 over 4 minus 1 is minus 1 over 4, if you know your fractions. And we could stop right here, but if you really want to, and this is completely unnecessary, but if you want to, you can rewrite this as 3 over 4 times the fourth root of x. This is also um, correct if you want to, but you don't necessarily need to do this. And on, on an exam, for example, if you got if you got the simplification process wrong, you might actually lose a few marks. So it's safer to just leave it like this. It's the same thing. Okay. So this next example, it's gonna be, it is trivial for the most part, but I'm gonna be spent doing an extreme amount of derivation on this, just because I really want to make sure that everyone understands the process of how these rules really work. So f of x is equal to x to the seven plus five x to the four minus ten x squared minus six. I want to take the derivative of this function. So the derivative of f of x so this is the same kind of notation okay so now we first take the derivative of the whole thing so we get x to the 7 plus 5x to the 4 minus 10x squared minus 6 then according to the sum rule or the sum and difference rule as i, as I kind of mentioned <coughs> excuse me we can write this as the derivative of sums so we get the derivative of x to the 7, let's see, plus the derivative of 5x to the 4, plus, and I know there's a minus sign there, but just bear with me, we can write this as the derivative of minus 10x squared, plus the derivative of minus 6. Now, I'm going to use the constant, the constant multiple rule to pull the 5 out and then to pull the minus 10 out. So if you go ahead and do that, we get the derivative of x to the 7. And then, I'm just going to fix that a little bit. Okay. And then next here, we're going to pull the 5 out. Oh, sorry, my screen just jumped. So this is going to give us 5 times the derivative of x to the 4. Then we can pull the minus 10 out, so we get minus 10 times the derivative of x squared. And then this is just left as is, so we get the, deriv the derivative of minus 6. Okay, so now if we go ahead and take the derivative of this, we get... Oh, sorry about that. So if we go ahead and take the derivative of this, we get 7x to the 6, then... By the power rule, the 4 comes down, and then we subtract 1 from the 4, so we get plus 5 times 4x cubed minus 10 times 2x to the 1, because the 2 comes down, and then we are left with a 1 on the, new, on the power, because we go 2 minus 1, and then the derivative of minus 6, the derivative of any constant is 0, so that's just plus 0. So if you go ahead and simplify this, we get 7x to the 6 plus 20x cubed minus 20x. And of course, anything plus 0 is the same thing, so we don't need to worry about that. And if you want, you can go ahead and take the x out, but this is completely unnecessary, so we're just going to stop there. So that is our next example. The next one is the same thing as the last one, but I'm not going to do it in so much detail. So this one is a derivative. So we're going to be differentiating. So square root of 2, x to the 7, times 3 root x, plus the cube root of x, plus... Oh, wait, I think I just... Didn't I just do that example? Oh, no, no, that was, that was a different one. Sorry about that. So root 2, x, x to the 7, plus... Yep, okay. So this is 3 times root x, and this is the cube root of x, in case, in case I wasn't clear. And that's plus lot of 2. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to convert the roots into powers. 
So we can rewrite this as root 2 x to the 7 plus, let's see, that can be written as 3 times x to the 1 half. This one we can write this as x to the power of 1 over 3 plus ln of 2. And then we can go ahead and take the derivative. So f of x and f prime of x. So we can rewrite this as, not rewrite, we can take the derivative as such. So we get 7 times root 2 x to the 6 plus, let's see, this is going to give us 3 over 2. If you're wondering how you got to 3 over 2, that's just 3 times 1 half from the power rule. So that gives us 3 over 2. So let me just go ahead and fix that. So 3 over 2 x to the power of, let's see, that's going to be minus 1 half plus 1 over 3 x to the minus 2 over 3 and the ln 2 just disappears because it's a constant and that's it we're done with that example so nothing too bad we could simplify this as the previous ones but we're not going to do that mechanically this is the derivative so there's no reason to simplify this in any way and most exams depending on where you're from don't require to simplify Many high schools, depending on where you're from, told you that you must simplify the answer. But in most universities and colleges, unless it's, unless the question explicitly tells you to, you don't need to simplify your answers. This is this is acceptable. Okay, so the next one is we're going to be differentiating. So f of x is equal to x squared plus one times four x minus two. Now, in the later videos, we will learn how to differentiate a product. But as of right now, we're not going to be doing products uh, because we don't know how to do that. So we can avoid this situation by, by expanding out the polynomials. So we get 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 2. Uh, so this is f of x. And if we differentiate, we get f prime of x is equal to so just like before so i'm not going to be doing so much detail on this but you will get 12x squared minus 4x plus 4. and once again i, I used the power rule here i used the power rule here i used i used the power rule here and this one is just the root of a constant which is zero so three goes three becomes a two three times four is 12. two becomes a one two times two is four one becomes a zero anything to the power of zero is one and well one times four is four and the minus two just becomes a zero so nothing too crazy there so most of these examples were very simple there's one example i'm going to do right now and this is from an old exam so this one says evaluate the limit as x approaches one of x to the one over n minus one divided by so let me just fix that a little bit so divided by x minus one where x is, sorry, not x, where n is a real number. Of course, we assume that n can equal zero for obvious reasons, because then this would be undefined. But otherwise, yes, it's a, it's a constant that cannot equal zero. Okay, so how do we do this limit? Now, notice the title of the video was Examples with Rules of Differentiation. So you might be asking, what does the limit have to do with this? Well, let's think about this. We know that the derivative at any point a, by definition, is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Okay, but now here's the thing. Its limit as x approaches a. So in this case, a is 1. And notice this formatting is the same as this formatting. So let's kind of double check that. For example, we claim that f of x is equal to x to the 1 over n. So according to this kind of equivalence right there, we should get that f of a is equal to 1. Is that true? Well, let's go ahead and see. So we know that a is 1 according to, the, according to when we compare the limits. So if I go and plug in 1, we get 1 to the power of 1 over n, but 1 to the power of any number, and remember that n is a constant, 1 to the power of any number is just 1. So that's okay, that's okay. So this formatting is kind of the same thing. 
So this means that by definition, this is the same thing as just finding f prime of one. So f prime of one is equal to the limit as x approaches one of x to the one over n minus one over x minus one. But you might be wondering, well, I haven't really, how do I actually do the limit? And that's the thing, you don't need to. By definition, f of x is equal to x to the one over n. So that means f of x is equal to x to the one over n. And then if this is the same thing as f prime of one, that means we can go ahead and take the derivative. So if I take the derivative, we get that f prime of x is equal to one over n, x to the one over n minus one. And once again, n is not zero. We just assume that, but otherwise this question would be nonsense. And then we plug in a one. So f prime of one is equal to one over n, one to the one over n minus one, but one to the power of any number is just one. So we get that f prime of one is equal to one over n. And then this right there is equal to the limit as x approaches one of x to the one over n minus one over x minus one. So all of this is equivalent and we're done. So this one was a particularly interesting example. This is from an exam I noticed a long time ago back when I was in university. And other than that question, there wasn't too much really do in terms of examples. Most of them were fairly trivial. So not too bad. Just make sure you remember the rules. And if you remember the rules, these are not too bad. And this example, if you remember the definition of derivative you, and recognize that this is kind of the same formatting, this, the results kind of followed likewise. So with that, uh, I hope this video helped. And if this video helped, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions or doubts, just leave it in the comments and I'll answer them as best as I can. And other than that, uh, I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.